Schrodinger wrote a little sort of book or essay, I think, on what is life. Uh, again, a, a physicist trying to look at a biological subject. Um, but one of the things that, that he struck on was this idea that um, life seems to contravene the second law of thermodynamics. Now, do you want to explain what that is, first of all, Paul, and why life seems to push against it? Yes. Well, first of all, I should say that the second law of thermodynamics was developed in the 19th century, largely to deal with practical problems of, of heat engines and uh, efficiency of, of things like that. But it was soon found to have a very general applicability. And so in one sense, it's the most fundamental law of physics that we know. And it has many different forms. But one way of thinking about it uh, is that there's a natural tendency in all living systems to become disordered or more chaotic. And any of our audience who have teenage children will, I think, know exactly what I mean by this. Um, and it's, <laughs> in their it's bedroom, much easier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> their bedrooms. It's much easier to uh, mess things up than to clear things up. Uh, and that's a general principle of nature. And, uh, and if you want a rather more concrete example, imagine taking um, a, a pack of cards newly purchased and you open them. I've never actually checked this, but I understand that they come in uh, suit and numerical order. Uh, and then you shuffle them. Uh, then, of course, they're going to become disordered after that. And if you gave uh, somebody a disordered pack of cards and they shuffled them for a few moments and gave them back to you and they were in an exact ordered state, you, you know you've been tricked, the magician. Uh, and so uh, in nature, there is that general and unsurprising tendency for order to give way to disorder. And so that's the uh, one statement of the second law of thermodynamics. It's very, very well established. Well, Schrodinger pointed out, and I think many people have recognized this, that life seems to buck that trend. It seems to go uh, from, not from order to disorder, but from order to more order, uh, both in uh, individual organisms, the way they uh, take in uh, di disordered uh, stuff from their environment and, and do uh, things with it, uh, but also uh, from one generation to the next. So if we look at how life has evolved, uh, the uh, degree of complexity we were talking about earlier, uh, one way of thinking about that is, is a greater degree of order uh, today than in the past. So it does seem to back that trend. Um, when you look at the letter of the law, uh, it, there's no real contradiction, and I think it's, this is really important that people understand that it's not that life is violating the second law of thermodynamics, it, it transcends its simple picture. Because what I said earlier of a natural tendency from go to uh, order to disorder, um, uh, that, that's in a closed system. So when I, uh, <clears throat> I was talking about in the 19th century, people had in mind a box of gas, for example, which is closed off from its environment. And if you start the gas off in an ordered state with, say, all the fast molecules at one end, all the slow molecules at the other, they soon intermingle and it uh, reaches some sort of equilibrium. Uh, and uh, life is not like that. Um, life is an open system. Uh, there's a throughput of energy and uh, export of, of chaos or entropy is the quantity we uh, talk about it. And so it maintains its internal orderly state by uh, exporting the trouble, if you like, to the uh, environment. And, and that, that's the absolute key. You see it also in the history of e evolution, life on Earth, um, that uh, for every more successful, more complex uh, uh, mutant variant that you get, there's a trail of destruction for all of the, uh, the others that uh, were sacrificed uh, in order to achieve that. And so there, there's an awful lot of, uh, there's a trail of disorder in biology, uh, both around individual organisms and in the deep evolutionary history. And so when you do the numbers, the, the, the books balance okay, that uh, the second law of thermodynamics uh, still uh, survives. But, and I just want to make this important point because uh, we may come back to this later, just because life doesn't violate the second law of thermodynamics absolutely does not mean that the second law of thermodynamics explains life. A lot of people have fallen for that. A lot of scientists have said, oh, there isn't a problem when you look at it carefully. Life is explained by the second law of thermodynamics. It doesn't contradict it, 
about the second law doesn't explain it. Uh, we need much more than that. 